It's Sunday morning, the 12th of March. The snow is all gone from the back porch here at 3,200 feet elevation. My name's Juan Brown. I'm a commercial pilot flying the long haul international routes on the 777 now. And I live very close to the Oroville Dam, maybe 30 crow miles or mighty Luska miles away uh, here at the 3,200 foot elevation. So the weather has changed quite a bit for the warmer. Um, I've been covering this story since I took that first flight with the small GoPro camera over the Orville, uh, the busted Orville spillway almost a month ago now, and this this series of videos has garnered huge attention all around the world, and um, so I want to welcome all the returning viewers and all the new viewers and remind you that this is an ongoing series. I try to make each video a stand a standalone um, document, but each video does kind of piggyback off the previous video. And so to remind you, if you got questions about how all this happened or how we got to where we are today, go back and review the rest of the video series, which <laughs> has grown to uh, 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 like 18 videos as of the 12th. So today we want to cover, uh, we want to get the real-time stats, check on the weather, and uh, go back and finish our review on the river valve outlet system and understand the importance of that key component to the Oroville structure, that piece of the puzzle, and why they could be so much great use today in buying the crews more time to clean up the debris in the Thermalito diversion pool. Let's take a look at the real-time numbers on Sunday the 12th of March, starting with the weather for the Sierra 7-day forecast. It's warming up. Uh, the temperatures are still just barely reaching freezing at night, so that's still good for a gradual release of the snow from the Sierra. Possibly some more precipitation towards the end of this week. The reservoir level remains very close to the 860 foot level, gradually rising, getting close to 861 feet. Outflows remain constant at 12.9, 12.8. Inflows are still varying uh, 16, 17 thousand CFS. Let's take a closer look at that. There's one of those wonky data points, disregard that. But look at the overall general trend line is steady, but slowly rising as the <clears throat> melt-off continues of the snow in the Sierra, between 15 and 17,000 CFS, rising and dropping as you go through the hours of the day. R river releases, remember again, this is from the entire Oroville complex, including all the four bays and after bays, are up to uh, 13,000 CFS. So that's quite a bit more, and I'm very interested to see what kind of effect that has on the farmers' levees well downstream of Oroville, the levees that were damaged when they had to suddenly drop this release to 2,500 CFS while they affected the emergency repairs. Remember, those levees that were soaked with water, saturated with water, uh, they had about three-quarters of a mile or so, maybe more, of collapse of some of those levee, levees way downstream of Oroville. So I wonder how those levees are faring now that this has been cranked back up. No rain recently, battery voltage remains the same. So inflows are still exceeding outflows, but not by much. And that gets us to our point about the river valve outlet system. If that river valve outlet system was operating right now, that would buy the time that operators need to continue to clean up that debris field. If those river valves were operating, it, you know, they only add an additional four or 5,000 CFS. But if you add that amount to the present 12 to 13,000 CFS, you would be keeping up, if not exceeding, the current inflows buying time. That's why those valves are fundamentally important at this time. So let's take a closer look at what those river valves are and a look at the history of those river valves and why they have been so problematic and why they're not in use at this time. 
River valves located at the bottom of Oroville Dam represent the last way to get water out of the Oroville Reservoir. This is crucial in times of extreme drought like that which we've recently suffered and it keeps the Feather River alive. The river valves are located here in Diversion Tunnel Number 2. Note also that Diversion Tunnel Number 1, which has been plugged up since the reservoir was first filled, always remains under water at the exhaust port and Diversion Tunnel Number 2 generally remains halfway out of the water, which is why the level of the Thermolito Diversion Pool is so critical to be maintained properly at 225 feet. Any higher and you risk losing control or you, you end up having to shut down the Hyatt power plant in order to prevent flooding of the power plant. The two river valves are located inside of two six foot diameter pipes located in the plug of the diversion tunnel number two. Downstream of the valves and the discharge tubes is a baffle ring or dispersion ring designed to slow down the flow and minimize the air pressure differential created when you open these valves up. Here's a picture of the original baffle ring, which was removed in April of 2009 due to its deteriorated condition. Scientists and engineers advised against operating the river valves without the baffle ring in place, yet against that advice, on the morning of July 22, 2009, the DWR sent five employees down to test the river valves to 100% flow. And sure enough, at 85% flow, the pressure relief wall, illustrated in yellow here, failed at 85% flow creating hurricane force winds inside the chamber and knock the employees to their feet and hanging on to the structure to prevent flying downstream into the discharge flow. Everybody survived with minor to major injuries and three to four years of delays, litigation, and fines ensued. Here's what the stock original river valves looked like after they were pulled out. The drought emergency of 2013 and 2014 finally set into play events to get these valves properly replaced in order to prevent the Feather River from drying up altogether. Engineers and scientists went to work designing a scale model of the operation to come up with a new design. Here's the new spherical valve designed that is electrohydraulically operated remotely so employees don't need to get inside that river valve chamber to open and close these valves. In July of 2014, the new valves are barged into diversion tunnel number two, bolted into place, and ops check good. The drought emergency is averted, the Feather River continues to flow, all at a cost of a mere $11 million. If the river valves got us through the entire uh, drought emergency, how come they're out of service now? Well, according to reports that I'm hearing, the river valve system was removed from service just prior to this whole spillway incident in order to improve its fire detection capability. And to understand this, we got to look at yet a separate incident, the Thermolito power plant fire. Yet a different separate power plant and a different separate incident. Fire broke out here in the Thermolito power plant on November 22nd, 2012, pretty much destroying this power plant, and it's still out of commission to this date. This power plant is part of the Oroville complex and located at the Thermolito four bay. Again, the main purpose of this power plant is to provide power to the California aqueduct system, making the California aqueduct system fairly self-sufficient in lifting water as that water proceeds towards Southern California. Part of the findings as the result of this fire is to improve fire detection capability throughout the Hyatt Thermolito Oroville complex. That's why the river valves are out of service at this time. 
So that's the long and short story of the river valve operating system. And the more you dive into this subject, or this entire issue at Oroville, it seems like management through crisis, crisis management, which is no way to run a 50-year-old infrastructure, a crucial part of California's water infrastructure. So later this week, I'd like to get down there and take a look at uh, how the Feather River is doing and also... We all got to keep our eyes on that main spillway the first time they reopen that up after all this work and see how much debris gets moved around. So stay tuned. It's trouble. It's trouble.